bring in Dan Orlovsky. Do you love Joe Burrow or do you love Joe Burrow? I love <laughs> Joe Burrow. Joe's my favorite young quarterback. Um, you know, Dan, I'll be honest with you, man. So obviously call college football for ESPN. And um, the year that LSU 2019 won the national championship, I had called a couple of Clemson games that year. And I've loved Trevor Lawrence really since that freshman season at Clemson. Called a couple of Clemson games that year and then going into the national title, I was I was Trevor Lawrence. I was just like, I, I think the kid's absolutely spectacular. And I thought Joe was really good and Heisman winner, all that stuff. But then I did the mega cast for that game for ESPN and we were on the field. It was me and McAfee and it was just a free for all. But I remember during that game and then after that game, walking away going, that's the guy about Joe Burrow. I was like that. He has that rare, just super rare ability that he mentally wants to just, he takes pleasure in taking your soul on a football field. Like he, he wants to humiliate you while also his pulse just never seems to rise at all. And I think it's one of those things or the thing that NFL teams just chase after, chase after for quarterbacks, but it's so hard to kind of touch and quantify. And uh, I said this last year, there was no young quarterback that I would have taken outside of Joe Burrow besides Deshaun Watson um, in that moment. And then I sit here today, there's not a young quarterback that I would take over Joe Burrow. Under the age of 25, give me Joe Burrow. Even Justin Herbert. Yeah, yeah, and I love Justin. I think Justin's fantastic. He's going to win MVP of the league at some point. What do they I do? Like what's 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 Bro do better than Justin Herbert? Um, I think Joe number one has the ability to never panic. You know, we call him poise, whatever. He just never panics with the football, and I see a great majority of that with Herbert, um, but not in the like not in the way that I see it with Joe. I think Joe can make um, more throws that require a little bit more touch, a little bit more love on them. Justin's arm is so powerful and so strong. Now, Justin can do things that Joe can't as well with the arm strength and the athleticism. Um, I, I just, I, I think because of just the, the, the ability to never panic with the football is my favorite quality of Joe. Yeah, you start to look at these quarterbacks, and I think it's easy to forget about Joe Burrow because he was playing for the Bengals. Like, that, you know, that's a cute little story. Then he got injured. Then mm -hmm. coming into this season, AFC North was packed, top heavy, it felt yeah. like. And then there was going to be the Bengals. And then you look up and you go, Bengals won the division and yeah. they're in the playoffs. But I also wondered bigger picture here. Are we being fair to the job that Joe Burrow did that it feels like it's a foregone conclusion? It's Aaron Rodgers MVP and then mm -hmm. Tom Brady second. Yeah. Maybe it's Joe Burrow, Jonathan Taylor. Has anybody been more – has? Have Rodgers and Brady been more valuable to their team than Joe Burrow? Uh, I don't think you could say that they've been exceedingly more valuable, but I do think that the fact that the Green Bay Packers were a 13 and three with Aaron, obviously 13 and four after this past weekend, and the one seed when, you know, that, and, and this is why I think that Matt LaFleur is the coach of the year. And, and with respect with the job that Mike Vrabel has done and, and a guy like Nick Sirianni and Zach Taylor, the off season has to factor into the equation when you're, when you're talking about Aaron Rodgers in regards to the MVP, this team lost their starting tight end midway through the season. They played games with Aaron Jones. They didn't have their all pro left tackle. They lost their basically best offensive lineman outside of Bakhtiari and Elkton Jenkins. The reality of that, Alan Lazard missed games. So the fact that Aaron Rodgers played at the level that he did and never hurt his football team in regards to kind of his impact on that team and being the one seed, yeah. given everything that transpired, that's why like Aaron's the MVP for me. I agree. Joe's been spectacular. If it wasn't for two Hall of Famers, Joe's probably in that top conversation, but I don't think you could put him past Aaron and Tom. Of all the, uh, Coaching vacancies, if you factor yeah. in the quarterbacking situation. Yeah. How would you rank them? It's a great question. I think it's the, I, I first of all, Denver Broncos is, is the number one for me. Um, With no quarterback. You guys sent, yeah, the Denver Broncos. When you guys sent over the note um, that that was going to be a question, I was like, well, that's, that's easy. It's Jacksonville. You know, it's Trevor Lawrence. And then I started to think about it and I said, well, you know, what about Denver, Dan? Because Denver's got a phenomenal roster. They've got great young skill talent. 
Really two good backs, one being very young, a solid offensive line. Sir Tan looks like a superstar. You just got to get a quarterback, right? And then I thought to myself, dude, you got to play Justin Herbert and you got to play Patrick Mahomes four times a year. You don't want that job. And then I started to lean towards, well, the Chicago Bears, because you, you know you've got at least a talented guy. In a year, more than likely, he's going to be the most talented quarterback in that division, assuming Aaron leaves Green Bay. Um, but the reason I put – and then obviously the New York Giants, I think the Giants have more talent on their roster than kind of with the situation portrayed it to be this year. Denver Broncos are one for me because I still think that th that is a potential destination for Aaron if Aaron leaves Green Bay. Um, AFC, get him out of the NFC, and they've got a head coaching vacancy that you can kind of Nathaniel Hackett pair it together potential. But I just think it's so hard to build a roster in the NFL around a quarterback. You like the, the, the Broncos already have. 95% of the puzzle done. Now the one missing piece is obviously <laughs> a missing piece, but we've got Rogers potentially in the market. We've got Russell potentially in the market. We've got Baker Mayfield potentially in the market. We've got Deshaun Watson in the market, whatever your opinion on that situation is and how the league handles it. And then we obviously have the draft. So I know it's easier said than done to find that guy, but we often don't have veterans entering the market that are good potentially like this, uh, I think second for me would probably be um, the Jacksonville Jaguars because of Trevor. Um, I, I just think he's still got the chance to be a phenomenal, phenomenal player. I would then say um, the New York Giants would be a close third. I think they could be too. I still think the Giants are the Giants, Dan. Like it's the stinking New York Giants. And I believe there's some young talent on their defensive side. I would move on from Daniel Jones. I would move on from Saquon Barkley easily. And then I put the Bears because they just don't have money and draft capital. You also have the Vikings situation, which is interesting. A new right. coach coming in, and you got Kirk Cousins, who gives you sort of – it's almost like it's food that, that uh, fills you up for about 15 minutes, and then you're hungry after that. Like, it's really yeah. good, but then it's like uh, – it's not that fulfilling, and you got to pay him $45 million. Yeah, I was having this conversation with Scott Pioli yesterday because – I was saying, you know, as a front office, how do you handle it? Because, you know, there's five or six just great guys. Like they, quarterback wise, they are great. And then there's that group of 10 or so that are good players. And if they get a good play caller and they stay healthy on the offensive side and they got good position players skill wise, they can play like a great player, but they're good. And how does the organization kind of maneuver its way saying, we got a guy that's good. When, when does the moment come, we got to chase the great one. We got to try and find a great one. Yeah, so Minnesota is a good one. I, I forgot. So Minnesota, the most interesting thing for me, for Minnesota, with the new general manager and the new head coach is, yes, what are you going to do with Kirk? I think his contract is guaranteed next year as well. And then, and I don't know Justin Jefferson at all, but I think he's a bona fide top three guy at the position, potentially top five, probably right now conversation. How do you get him? How do you convince him to stay when, you know, eventually Justin's going to become a free agent and how do you convince that player to stay a part of your organization? I think is one of the biggest challenges for the general manager. Dak Prescott has been good, very good or other. Uh, Dak Prescott's been good. This now Dak Prescott's been very good this year. He's been very good. There's been moments where he did not play uh, to his kind of standard um, injury he did not maneuver the pocket well. He would drop his eyes against the rush. I think the connection between him and Amari Cooper is very much so lacking. The reality is what the tape shows and then the numbers say. Um, I think that there's two quarterbacks in the playoffs, three quarterbacks in the playoffs that have an immense amount of pressure on them. Dak Prescott, Matthew Stafford, and Aaron Rodgers. Um, I think Aaron's probably third in that list because uh, I think he's so at peace with whatever's happening. Um, I think the amount of pressure on Dak Prescott and Matthew Stafford is enormous. Yeah, I would throw Josh Allen in there, too. Yeah. This was supposed to be his year. The year. Yeah, I mean, Josh has had a tremendous year. I, I agree. It's playoff time. Yeah. You know, New England is weaker than it has been. You know, if they would see them five year, years ago, six years ago, I think the AFC is absolutely loaded. Um yeah, you know, like if if I would if you had told me they had Tredavious White still, I would sit here and say, yeah, because I think that defense is unbelievable. I still think their defense is really, really, really good. I don't think that Josh has more pressure on him than Matthew or Dak, though. 
Okay. Like, yes, there's pressure on them, but I don't think more than those two guys. More likely to leave their team, Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers? Hmm. I think Russell Wilson. You know, I really do. I, I think we obviously heard the rumblings last offseason. It seems, and Mina Kimes has pointed this out many a times on NFL Live, like it seems like the organization is going to have to choose Russell Wilson or Pete Carroll. Yeah. Um, I would go, let's take Russell, let's keep Russell and, and, and find a new coach. But I don't know if that's what Russell wants. I don't know if that's what the organization wants. I just, and I think that, you know, given what had happened last off season and then the way this season went, um, I just think it's, it's likely that he leaves that place. I also think it's likely that there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to be very interested in Russell. Um, the way that, that things have gone in green Bay, it's, you know, like, I feel like I try to go on in my job and be very convicted in the things that I say, I have absolutely no clue what Aaron's going to do. <laughs> I just wonder why would you leave the NFC North? Like I, yeah, I, I yeah. I've already, I'm, I can plug in at least five wins. It feels yeah. like for the next couple of years. Yeah. And you've got as much as he was critical of the front office, that front office knows how to draft. They, they, oh. they, they may not have taken a wide receiver instead of Jordan Love, but they can flat out draft and they sort of rival, you know, the Ravens are always wonderful. Yep. Man, yep. I, so I got that. I got the legacy there. I'm, I love Denver. I think Denver is the, the sneaky pick because that roster yes. is ready to detonate yeah. in a good way. But I, I just look around and go, you keep Devontae Adams, got two running backs, you got your you know, offensive line, some defensive players who can make a difference. You like LaFleur. You can deal with you know, the front office. Like, well, yeah. you know. the, the only reason Aaron would leave would be things that have nothing to do with what transpires on the football field. Mm. This would have to be, I just want to change the scenery or I want to move somewhere different or I just, I wanted a different challenge. It's different than the situation that Tom had because Tom left new England because of a lot of what was transpiring on the football field, because of the depletion of talent, where if Aaron leaves, it's going to be because I wanted to do something different. I wanted to try something different in a different space. It has nothing to do with, I felt like opportunity football wise was going to be greater somewhere else. He's Dan Orlovsky of the mothership. You can see him. Uh, they got Monday night wild card. That's uh, the mega cast there. Uh, Dano with Mina Kimes, Marcus Spears, Laura Rutledge. And uh, you can see them daily on NFL Live. Uh, is there a college quarterback worth a top five pick this year? Um, I haven't seen one, Dan. You know, I, and I and I won't dive into those kids really till like the end of February, early March. But I I haven't seen one. I think ten, top you know, ten, got, top ten. There will be. You know this league. You know <laughs> there, there will be. Um, you know I think the Kenny Pickett kid is interesting because from Pitt because of what Mac Jones has done this year. I mean, you get it. And what Joe Burrow has done now, I don't think he's nearly as good as Joe, but you know, that, that guy that played a lot of snaps in college and that is a very smart player and, and is kind of, you know, hardened that leadership skill set and is mature enough to go into that locker room and, and um, is a better thrower than he is an athlete, but a, a good enough athlete and creator. I think Kenny Pickett is an intriguing guy. Um, obviously Corral is going to be somebody that is going to be very much so paid attention to because of his athleticism, Malik Willis from Liberty, because of just the raw special talent and athlete that he is. Um, I think someone will go in the top 10. Yes. I think this strong kid out of Nevada is going to be one of those to keep an eye on that. Yeah. 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 Don't, I, don't I, I know enough I about him. You know, that's where you're like, wait a minute. Uh, he's going to test off the charts or it, it, it just feels like if somebody's going to come out of nowhere, it might be, might be that quarterback, or at least that's just a gut feeling that I, cause every year there's always a riser. There's always sure. like, here he comes. And you're like, Whoa, yeah. wait a minute. And then you yeah, realize, and there's, you know, then there's just going to be so much quarterback movement this year, man. Like I know, I know we thought last year it was going to be it. And we had a, a little bit, but this year, I mean, you could be thinking of, you, you, you know, the Dolphins could be in the conversation for a quarterback. You're, you're looking at the, um, you know, what happens with the Raiders and Derek Carr? I'm such a Derek Carr fan. And I think he's a phenomenal player, but they don't owe him any more money. I, I, who's going to be their head coach? You know, it's just like you know, there's there, Derek Carr can have movement. What happens in Cleveland with Baker Mayfield? What happens in Pittsburgh? Um, 
you know, what happens in Indianapolis, what happens in Houston, there's just so much yeah. potential movement at the position, man. Uh, obviously, you are here to show off the guns. I just got done working out, man. I wouldn't call them guns, dude. I've, I'm built let's like see. my let's see what let, Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got there. Look at this, Dan. Look ooh, at this. Ooh. You know, suddenly I don't, is, I don't feel so bad. Dan, this is someone who, like, I've worked out relatively fairly since I was like 12 years old. But <laughs> it, it, it just didn't happen, man. It just didn't. This is like someone who works out really, really hard. Yeah. And I remember, you know, being like, in the NFL, my first couple of years, and I would hit the weight room as hard as anybody, just because that's, you know, something I, I was brought up working at the Bubba's net. And the guys would make fun of me because they'd be like, no one on our team works out harder than you, yet no <laughs> one looks worse than you do. And I would sit there and be like, yeah, guys, I, I understand that. Try, try being the guy. See, you're like the before to Brady Quinn's after. Brady's an absolute <laughs> specimen. I could, yeah. I'm not even the before. I'm like the like like fresh out the womb of Brady Quinn's after. You know, just kind of like smushy and you know why did why does your body look like that rather than it shit as an adult male? Oh, uh, great to talk to you as always. Thank you, buddy. We'll be watching. All right, bud. Thank you so much. Have a good day. And that's Dan Orlovsky, the uh, ESPN's first Monday Night Wild Card. Will feature the mega cast with uh, Dan and. The rest of the NFL live team, Mina Kimes, Marcus Spears, Laura Rutledge.